This is the Corsair Qatar. Here's a quick look at the shape. You'll notice that it doesn't have any side buttons. It's just mouse 1, 2 and 3 and then a DPI button. You only have one light on it and that's the back logo and that stays red. And you'll also notice that this is an optical sensor using the old school red right below it. So let's do a button test. Left mouse button. Right. DPI button. Mouse 3. As you can hear, there's a slight rattle going up, but that's pretty normal on most mice. Tactile feedback, there's just enough to be able to distinguish between each step, but it's not as tight as the G3 Zerato. So it's a little bit mushy. For me, it's comfortable and silent, and I quite like it. But for people who rely on the tactile feedback, it may not be the best option. There's a slight rattle when tapping it. Nothing out of the ordinary though. And when you shake it, nothing. So it seems to be built quite well. As for the materials, they're rubber sides, plastic on top, just a smooth plastic, no texture on there, and the rubber sides are textured. The scrubble has a plastic edge, but you don't feel that, your finger's mostly on the rubber on the top. You've probably noticed already that the cable is stiff. It is a bit of an issue, so I don't give it full points for that, but it is quite smooth, so it doesn't drag along the pad. On the base, you have three large mouse feet, and they glide quite well, although they seem a bit louder than the G302. Have a listen. So it feels smooth, but it must be a little bit rough to be actually causing that amount of sound. The grip width on this seems to be about six centimeters. Looks like it's a bit over actually, maybe closer to six and a half. And the base is roughly 10 centimeters. I don't count this over hanging edge here because that's not the base. So the actual shape seems to remind me of the Intelli Explorer 4 by Microsoft. And that is to say that it's a relatively short mouse, but with a wide base. Personally, I could never aim these sorts of mice as well as the other ones, which are more like 11 centimeters long and 5.5 centimeters wide. So that joke I made about the tennis ball making a good mouse was actually just a joke. Like, there was no truth in that. I have a bit of a theory on what makes a good mouse shape. Now, I've noticed that the golden width, or grip width, on a mouse is actually 5.5 centimeters to me. And the best length for a base is actually about 11 centimeters. So you divide 5.5 grip width into 11 centimeters that's half. And if you look at my hand, this is 18.5 centimeters or roughly around there. And if I hold my hand like that, from the thumb over to the little finger, that's 9 centimeters or about there. Divide 9 centimeters into the 18, again, that's half. So maybe the perfect ratio is actually 2 to 1. You want the length to be twice the width. Anyway, just a theory, keep it in mind for the future. With a little bit of cable overhanging, this mouse weighs 88 grams. So it's definitely a light, small mouse. As for grip styles, I actually find this a bit too small to palm grip. You can see there's a big gap in there. So I'm sort of doing a hybrid sort of claw or palm grip, I'd say. So for my hand size, I'd say that one, claw grip. Claw grip feels pretty easy to do with this and definitely fingertip grip, very easy. But again, that's going to depend on your hand size. Okay, let's do some sensor testing. So first we do some rocker jumps, just to see if it spins out at all. I do this all the time in game, which means that if a mouse can't do this, then I'm not going to use it. And you can hear in the background, the cable is hitting on everything. So it is a bit of a hassle, as I mentioned. Not uncommon though, that happens a lot. Let's just do some quick turns. These are some 180s or thereabouts. It's really hard to get the sensitivity right on this mouse, and I'll show you why later in the software. But, just some quick movements, throwing it as fast as I can, <laughs> and hitting all the mice with the gable. Yeah, no spin out, the sensor's good. Now that was at 3200 dpi, this is now at 400. Just to make sure it doesn't have any weird issues, the lower you go. And throwing it as fast as I can, no problem. Now let's do the sniper test. This is where I have the FOV set to 1. So fully zoomed in, I'm going to move it very, very slowly. And you'll see that it's going pixel by pixel. This is at 400 dpi, so that's actually a good result. And 
and then we'll just try some smooth movement with it. Now it's got the usual 400 dpi wobble and everything, but other than that it's a good performance. Now same test at 3200 dpi, just going to move it very slowly, it seems to be holding quite well, I saw some movement in there for a second but I think that's more the mouse shape doing that. Just moving the mouse smoothly now. Yeah, the sensor seems nice. Now I have no accurate way of measuring whether there's latency on the sensor or not. But just in game right now and testing it with the Death Addict Chroma, it feels like it's quite snappy, very responsive. So as far as I can tell with an unscientific test, there is no delay on this sensor. As for acceleration and deceleration, I've done this test a few times now and I even compared it to the Logitech G302. If we just move all the way around here and then quickly back, you notice that I didn't get anywhere near where I was meant to, which was over on this doorway. So it seems like this sensor has deceleration. Up until this point, I haven't found any problem with this sensor. But according to these tests, it does seem like there's deceleration. It might be my copy, I'm going to have to do some more research. If you do have one of these mice, let me know in the comments. But for now, take caution, there might be deceleration on this one. Here are the settings I was using, so you can see I'm on 3200 dpi. They have this point to speed option, I'm not sure what it is, I tried it with the lower and I was having the same problems, so I'm not sure if that's causing a problem, but I definitely think this is moving too quickly for 3200 dpi. Now I'm just going to draw some lines to see if there's any jitter or skipping. Just drawing straight lines at the moment, fairly quickly, doesn't look like there's angle snapping. This is a normal performance that you'd get from an optical sensor. Now let's just draw some circles. Still no skipping. Now let's do it quickly. So the sensor seems good, it's just deceleration on there, or something. At the low setting, the liftoff distance is 1 DVD, so it's about 1.4mm, but it can't track on 2. And at high, it can track at over 4. As far as I can tell, there is no click latency, it gets my usual score of about 220 on that human test. In the software, you have DPI ranging from 100, in increments of 100, and that's all the way up to 6000. You can have 5 set, you have some custom settings, I'm assuming by the pros, and thankfully it saves your config even when you change it, so custom stays what you want. In the lighting, you've either got solid colour, pulse, or just nothing and there is no option to actually change the brightness level. The LED is quite bright. You can remap the buttons, keystroke, shortcuts, open programs, calculator, etc, DPI, media control. So you could actually set the DPI button to back in the browsing, but other than that, the software is no frills as well. So what's my conclusion on this mouse? I'd say it's not too bad for first person shooters. Despite the deceleration, I was playing fairly well with it. The bigger problem was actually the shape. I just found I wasn't as steady or as reliable in my aim with the mouse, even after hours of play. The buttons are quite good, so it would make a good mobile mouse, and I don't think that the deceleration problem would actually affect that. For people who are left-handed or just want an ambidextrous mouse, this is a decent option, although I would prefer the Rocket Cairo, even though the Cairo is a bit heavier, it just seems like such a better mouse in so many ways. Anyway, I'll leave an Amazon link below if you do want to check it out, I'll also leave one to the Rocket Cairo. In fact, I'd probably rather the Kinzu V3 over this one as well. I was actually aiming extremely well with the Kinzu V3. I didn't aim too well with the Corsair. But that's going to be down to hand size and personal preference. I'm just throwing out ideas. It's really up to you what you want to do with them. So I hope that helps. Stay tuned for more reviews. Any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.